I noticed a very beautiful building. And the uh, main sanctuary was head, just off to the one side. There was a little chapel, I guess, attached. And it was beautifully decorated in every way. <laughs> Except I noticed at the back of it, near the corner, there was beaten up old cross there. My immediate thought of that sort of spoils the looks of everything else. It's out of place. What's it there for? I thought, well, maybe they're doing some renovations. Somebody bought this and was going to fix it up. So with my curiosity, I rambled back there to see what it was. And beside it was a plaque that said, uh, this is a memorial to our men that have served in the wars. And uh, this cross was taken from one of the graveyards in Belgium and brought here and is kept in its original condition as a memorial to those men who gave their lives for us. And that changed my attitude completely about its position there. That was the type of cross that Jesus died on. An old rugged cross, as we were just singing. Not a gilded cross. Oh, there's nothing wrong with our fancy crosses. There's one on the front of this pulpit. There's usually one behind here. But it was an old rugged cross that Jesus suffered and died upon. And why did he do it? He could have had a choice, couldn't he? He said he could have called the legion of angels to come and rescue him from that. But he didn't do that. He went to the old rugged cross. And in that 27th chapter of Matthew, from which some of our scriptures were taken, it mentions that they were mocking him and saying he saved others. Himself he cannot save. Only one problem with that, I think it should be would not. But at the same time, it is right. <laughs> because it couldn't be both ways. He had a choice. Would he save himself? <coughs> or would he save others? <coughs> he chose to save others. That includes you and I. And all those around about with whom we might share the gospel. Those that we might pray for around the world. That they'd come to know the Lord. The choice was Jesus. Said thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days. Save thyself if thou be the son of God. Come down from the cross. He wouldn't come down. We know that there was a temptation there to avoid this. For we hear him praying in the garden. Father, if there be any other way, deliver me from this. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Yes, the humanity of Jesus cried out for deliverance. But the deity of Jesus said, no way. Those people mean more to me than my own suffering. Those people that are nailing me to the cross, those people who had cried for my crucifixion, those people who had thought that they had me on trial, yes, and those people down through the ages, all around the world, all the way down to 2018, there in Quinty West, and everywhere else. Yes, they mean more to me than my own suffering. He chose a free will choice. He chose to save others. As they mockingly said, he saved others. 
Himself he cannot save. They spoke greater than they knew. They spoke a great truth. He couldn't do both. He had a choice. It was true what they said, though they didn't recognize him as a savior. God is a just judge. The price of sin must be paid by one or by all. The Bible tells us that all have sinned. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. The, the just wages. You see, we're working, we get our wage at the end of the week, we get paid for what we've done. Somebody gives us a gift, we didn't earn that. But our wage we earned. And our sins have earned the wage, the price of death. And so it had to be paid for. And Jesus said, I'll pay it. I don't know if any of you have been in, got themselves deeply in debt at some time and just didn't know how you were going to get out, but somebody, maybe a relative or somebody, came along and said, well, I'll pay that to get you out of debt. If you did, I hope it's appreciated and you kept out of debt afterwards. But uh, that would be a wonderful gift, wouldn't it? But... The price of sin was so much greater than, than any debt that we could accumulate in this world. And some people get huge debts. But little compared to the price of sin. And Jesus paid that huge price for you and I and for the whosoever will come on to him. It was paid by one. Jesus chose to pay it, to pay it all. What was the alternate choice? Well, in the 43rd verse, it says he trusted God. Let him deliver him now if he have him. For he said, I am the son of God. He trusted God. Deliverance for Jesus or hell for mankind. What a choice. Aren't you glad that he didn't choose that way of deliverance? Oh, I know on Good Friday we, we tend to cry out, why? Why should he have suffered so much? Why can we call it Good Friday? What is good about a person dying? We never think of it that way. Oh, I know as Christians, if a, one passes on and they've been a Christian, we say, well, they've gone to their reward. I have a little funeral coming up in Sealy's Bay there next week for a man, 92 years old. He'd been a Christian, I was going to say all his life. I don't know about that, but a good part of it. As longer than I had known him anyway. And uh, he passed away. The immediate thought was that he's gone to be with the Lord. And yet at the same time, though there's a sense of joy about that, the assurance he had that he'd lived for God, and now he's gone to be with uh, God in his eternal home, there's a sadness that he won't be there anymore. He won't be taking part in the church anymore. He won't be there with his family anymore. And we feel concerned for him. He has a son that's never been married. He stayed home and looked after the parents and uh, really cared for his father right up until his dying day. It's going to be awfully hard for Richard. Despite the assurance we have of that man's deliverance into the hand of God, as it were. 
It's, it's a sad day to lose someone. How could we possibly say that that Friday, Jesus dying on the cross, was a good Friday? Well, it wasn't good for his suffering, but it was good for us, wasn't it? And that's why it's Good Friday. Good because the price of our sins was paid. If, I used that illustration before, if you're in debt and somebody paid it, but uh, if they paid it secretly, maybe you had a big debt at the bank and mortgage or something and you didn't, couldn't pay it and you were getting behind and, and you went in one day to say, well, is there something I can do about this? And they said, it's all right. It's paid for. Boy, you'd be rejoicing, wouldn't you? <laughs> And that's what Jesus did. He said, that's too big for you to ever pay. I'll pay it for you. He suffered and died for us. Saved others himself he cannot save if he be king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe. No, they wouldn't have. <laughs> His love was so great. So great that he stayed on the cross with all its agony, with all the mockery that was going on, with all the disgrace of it. For the scripture says in the Old Testament and quoted again in Galatians that cursed is he that dieth upon a tree, on a cross, in other words. Cursed is the one that meets his death by hanging. But there he hung upon that cross, accepting that curse, accepting that mockery, accepting that pain, all for you and me. Such love, such wondrous love, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like that. We sometimes sing that song, don't we? So great, he stayed. He couldn't let man be lost without hope. He just couldn't. Despite the agony, despite all that would cry out of his humanity for deliverance, he loved us too much to do it. It was his love. No, it wasn't the nails that hung, held him on that cross. It was his love for us that kept him there. He couldn't save himself and save others at the same time. So he chose us and suffered and died for us. Was it a wise decision? Well, depends on the response. If people refused to accept him and accept his sacrifice on their behalf, it was a waste. It was a poor decision to pay that price if it's not accepted. But for all those who have accepted and will accept him, it was a wise decision. It saved souls from hell and paid the price into heaven. For all who will come. I trust each one has responded to that. Don't let it be wasted. Jesus paid it all.